Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, an honest edition is Clock Tower, brought to us by Human Entertainment. Clock Tower is one of the classic horror games that unfortunately never made it to North America when it originally was released. The game is a point and click style of horror game and brings us a lot of the same ideas that we would later see in other survival horror style games that were released later on. In the game, we take the role of Jennifer, who along with three other orphans are adopted by a mysterious recluse known as Simon Burrows. When they end up arriving though at the Clock Tower, the giant mansion, they soon find out that things aren't what they seem and it's not long before the horror truly begins. The game features multiple different endings, so for this play it through, we're going to be getting every one of the endings that the game has. To do so, we will have to replay a lot of the same areas repeatedly throughout multiple playthroughs in order to get to these endings, but I'll try to make it as quick as possible in order to see them all. As we begin Clock Tower for the first time, you'll have the option to go either into a quick start or the full game start, which gives you the opening dialogues as well as the small prelude before you get control of Jennifer at the beginning of what would be the quick start game. After the opening cutscene, you have control of Jennifer. Start to talk to the other orphans that are also in the room with you. You can talk to them in any order, but you'll have to talk to them multiple times in order to initiate all the dialogue to get the next part to trigger. Eventually, Jennifer will actually leave the room and start to look for Mary herself, but after leaving the room for just a couple of seconds, she's immediately drawn her attention back into the room she just was. 
when we re-enter, we find out that all of the orphans have been kidnapped or have gone missing at least. Now, this is where the game actually begins. So when you do quick start, this is where we will be starting from. Like I said, the game has a lot of different endings, and we're going to start off by getting the S ending, which overall would be the best ending, but as far as the canonical storyline of Clock Tower and the Clock Tower series, it's actually not the canon ending to the game. Controlling Jennifer takes a little bit of getting used to because you're basically using a mouse pointer. You can use either the L or the R button in order to make her run in one direction. You're able to cancel out her actions, pull out the secondary item menu, which some items that you end up grabbing actually aren't even in that particular menu, as well as the ability to interact with other objects and people. We're going to start off by heading into this room. Check the box on top of the dresser right by the entrance. It may contain the West Wing Key, which is one of its two locations. This is an item that you may need, but you don't absolutely have to get, depending upon what ending and what circumstances and rooms you're going to be traveling to. Now, we can leave this room and go down the hallway and enter into the next door, which will lead us to this room right here, or we can just take the shortcut between the rooms. Check out the dresser here in the lower left. If you hit the right spot, you'll find the small bottle of perfume, and you'll end up adding that to your inventory. Be careful checking the mirror. Sometimes you'll just end up checking your hair, and other times a hand will grab out and try to strangle Jennifer, and you'll have to mash the panic button in order to get the hand off of you. There's a few times in the game where you'll see the portrait in the lower left corner start to flash, and this is an indicator that it's time for you to mash the button in order to try to get out of that situation. Now, the next couple of steps can be done a little bit differently from one another. You don't have to come in here first if you don't want to. You can go straight to the left of the hallways, which will end up doing a lot of our other playthroughs. When you enter into this bathroom, though, and it's all spooky, make sure that you go back and open the door. This way, it'll be a little bit easier because of what's coming up in just a second. After you get the door open, then you can check the shower curtain for a uh, gory surprise. This is our first chance to meet up with Scissor Man or Bobby Burrows, and we're going to immediately run away from Bobby here and head back into the hallway. Now we're going to head over to the left, and our goal is to get him off of us. And to do that, we have to get into one of a few different spots that kind of makes him disappear. The easiest way to do this is by heading into this room and then clicking on the stairs. The walking up and down the stairs animation, which we'll have to do a lot throughout the game, is really, really slow and ends up adding a lot of extra unnecessary time to the game just trying to climb up these stairs. When you do finally reach the top though, head all the way over to the left. There's two doors on the far left side, one of which is going to be locked for right now, and the other one is the one we need to enter, but it can be a little bit difficult if the camera doesn't shift all the way over in order to see the other door that we actually need sometimes. There are several ways to go about the entire game, even with the multiple endings. There are multiple ways to go after the same particular ending, so even though I'm going to be going through certain motions throughout the course of my playthrough, just keep in mind there are a few different ways to play it. We're going to head inside of this room and run over to the left, making sure that we click on kind of the box on the left side, in which case you'll try to climb over this giant dresser. Mash the panic button in order to get her over. If you end up failing, Bobby will end up showing up and cut you down. So you, once you get over though, he will end up eventually leaving. When he leaves, you'll end up climbing automatically back over the dresser. The thing is though, we need to actually get an item that's on this left side, and this is kind of one of the weird things about the game. So in order to get back to the left side, you have to climb back over. But she can't do it now because she's not being chased, even though she was just over there. So you have to check on it to see that, hey, she can't do it. Then you can click on this box to the right, which you'll then push to the left, allowing you now to climb back over and get the item within this chest, which is the black robe. 
There are a handful of other items that you're going to be grabbing throughout and you can potentially grab for other aspects, but the perfume as well as the black robe is some of the most important of the items because we'll be grabbing them in almost every single run that I end up doing during this playthrough. Now, before we leave the room though, make sure that you click on the bucket in the lower right corner to get the insecticide. I end up accidentally skipping by it, so now I have to turn my character right back around and go back into the room. It's a little bit difficult to see, but there's cans on the ground, one of which is the insecticide that we'll now have in our inventory because we'll be using that in just a second. Once you leave the room, we're going to be heading right and going right back down the staircase. We had that long animation again. Remember earlier I mentioned about the West Wing key being in multiple places? The second place that it can possibly be is to the left of that closet hallway. All the way to the left, there's a bird's nest that you can push a box to in order to get the West Wing key that way. And we'll actually be doing that in other uh, subsequent playthroughs because of the little bit of randomness that the game does have. There's a few factors that are random each time that you end up playing. Once you get back down the staircase here, head all the way over to the left side. The first door in the hallway to the left is the kitchen area, which is why we need the insecticide. When you enter inside the kitchen, make sure that you don't accidentally click the stove thing on the far left until you've selected the insecticide from your inventory. Also located inside here is a fridge on the left that has a piece of meat in it. That's another important item that we'll be using on a few other playthroughs, but we don't have to get it in order to get the S-ranked ending. Once we now have the key from inside of that infested stove, head back out into the hallway and head back over to the right. Now in this hallway here, there are two locked doors. One was above where we ended up being where that closet hallway was, and one is just above the door that we just came from a second ago here. Now, one of these will be either locked with the gold key or one will be locked with the silver key and they change up depending upon different playthroughs and there's a few different events that can happen because of them. That whole part of the sequence we're not going to really be messing with during this playthrough, but I figured I would mention it. I accidentally went through the wrong door here. The one I really wanted to go through is on the upper floor uh, going through that west wing uh, hallway. Now on the far side of the mansion, the rooms that we're going to be heading to, this is where the most of the random factor comes in. There's a group of rooms and they can all be changed out for which one ends up being where in subsequent playthroughs. In order to get into the final area, the cave, there is one of a few different things you can do. Uh, I will be showing a couple of them during these playthroughs. The biggest ones being either finding a spear or a staff that you'll end up putting into a certain location, and the other one involves finding a statue that you end up putting on a spot. Since we went through the upper path though first, we're going to end up stopping by the children's room. This is a room that we're going to be doing pretty much every playthrough. Right at the very beginning of the room, there's the ceremony key hidden underneath of kind of the doll sitting on that box. After that happens though, the doll in the room will come to life and start moving around. 
Now, at this point, it's kind of random, but at some point, eventually, the doll will attack you. And you'll know it's doing it when it starts flashing on your panic screen and your icon in the lower left corner. Make sure when that happens, though, you're mashing the button so that you end up deflecting the doll and you're able to exit the room safely without dying. That key that we got in there, the ceremony key, is an item that we need in order to get into the room that has the entrance to that cave or final area. Now, in order to open up the latter area, that's where we need that item, such as the staff or the demon statue. Now, for this run, we're going to be going into a room that we're only going to be doing during this run, which is a secret location that kind of is like a very secret area of the game and why this is considered the S-ranked ending. Uh, in order to get to it, though, we're going to head all the way over to the right here after putting the plank of wood over the small gap. You have to look at the gap first, and then you can grab the plank of wood and put it there. Once in this room, go over to the right side here and you have these crates that are sitting on this device. You'll be able to click on them and move it out of the way. It's obvious now that something's going on with the wall in the background. She ends up having to go and kind of look at it a little bit. Eventually, when you finally get control of her again, you can see like the crowbar or steel bar sitting on the right kind of leaning. Then you'll be able to click on that and you'll be able to use that in order to bust open the wall to get to the secret hidden prison. Now, at this point, when you go to do this, the crate in the room will shake and one of two things will happen. It will either be Bobby inside and then you'll have to run away from him and then eventually hide and get him off of your trail. Or we got lucky where we have the cat pop out instead, which is just kind of a random jump scare that is just like that cool kind of like alternative. You don't know which one that you're going to end up getting depending upon what playthrough you're getting. But thankfully we get the one that we actually want to happen. Once you're able to finally enter into this room, there's a few items that you'll be able to check, a couple of notes, and then we'll be able to check the skeleton that's located in the upper corner.
After finding out all that information, we're going to now head back out into the hallway and head over to the far left side, crossing back over the plank and now heading downstairs. The rooms that are located here are all kind of shifted around. Each time that you play, you don't know which one you're going to end up getting. They're the same possible rooms, but they're going to be in different locations. Now, what we're looking for is potentially the library. We need the cage room, which is what this room is. It's the cage room where we're coming here, and we're going to check this spot over here on the right side where this dead crow is, and we end up getting the key. Now, this will end up allowing us to free the crow who helps us during the ending of the game, and there's a couple of endings that are affected by freeing him. What you do is, once you have the key, go to the left side, pull out the key from your inventory. It's one of the keys that actually appears in your inventory. And then you're going to use it on the cage on the left, which will free the crow. After a little bit of a cutscene, you'll get control of Jennifer again, and we'll exit out of the room. Once you're back out into the hallway, we're going to continue over to the right here. There's one more possible door here. And like I said, since they're all random each time, you're not sure which one uh, you're going to end up having here. This is another one of the ones we need. This is the library. And what we need to do is check the book right here. There's two possible locations that you can get this exact same dialogue. Like I said, it gets random in a couple of spots. And if you get this dialogue, that means you're able to get the idol, the demon statue, from this other statue. And that statue is located on the second floor across that plank of wood that we set by just a little bit ago. We ended up crossing to get to that other secret room. Now that we know that we can get that demon statue, we can go ahead and grab that. So we're going to head back to the left and head back up the staircase. Once you're back up here, go across the planks of wood, past the first statue, and then it's going to be the second statue. It's right side here, or our, on our right side, is the location of the statue. And this will allow us now, in the ceremony room, to open up the ladder to go down to the cave. With the statue in hand, head back to the left and down the staircase. Of course, once again, taking forever in order to get down here. Once you're down on the bottom floor, we're going to head left, head left through the next hallway and go through the door. Now, the rooms in here are, once again, the ones that would sometimes be switched up with those other two ones we already saw, the library and the cage room with the crows. Uh, one door is always going to be one you can't open. This was actually changed later on in the PlayStation re-release. Uh, but this is the room we actually need. This is the ceremony room, the ritual room. Uh, since we have the demon statue, uh, we place it on the small thing over here on the far left side. In order to speed things up, a lot of times you want her to kind of run and then pull out the item and use it. If you use it from a farther distance, she takes forever in order to get to the spots. But it's just kind of finicky. Uh, a lot of times it's just going to be, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get through areas uh, by clicking things too early. Uh, but once you have the floor opened up here, we're going to head down into the cave for the first of what will be many times. Once you're down here, you're going to see another cloaked figure, and you're going to see a dog sitting here. Run to the right. Don't run all the way, but 
stop right in front of the dog. And your character will automatically do this if you just tap the run button, like, a couple of times. Like, after you press it that second time, you, like, press it one more time to get right near the dog, she'll auto-stop right where you need. You then want to use the robe and the perfume. You have to make sure you use both of them on your character, and then you'll be able to bypass the dog no problem. Now, when you're over here, we're going to be going through that cave entrance in a second, but we head all the way to the right, we unfortunately find another one of the orphans, and unfortunately, she's not looking so good. After that cutscene has played out and we have control of Jennifer again, head now back to the left side and enter into that cave opening we saw a few moments ago. Now head over to the right side, you're just going to keep on running. Uh, Jennifer will have to kind of climb up on a thing and then she's going to be climbing back down on a thing, but just keep on heading to the right. When you make it here, you make it to this giant stage, interact with the curtain on it, uh, and then be prepared to start mashing the buttons in order to panic and try to escape and run away. This whole segment is a bit finicky. Uh, every time I've played it, if you're not precise and just mashing most of the time, you're going to end up failing it, so you want to kind of like do a nice pace of mashing most of the time the portrait is flashing. Uh, there's all these cutscenes that are playing out automatically. You don't really have control of her and all. You don't have to make her run. She will automatically run through the section. Uh, you just have to focus on mashing those buttons. When you make it over here to this left side here on this giant mudslide, she will automatically fall at least once, but keep mashing the buttons. She'll then start climbing again, and once she gets up to a certain point here, if she keeps going and doesn't fall back down, you have successfully completed uh, this chase sequence. Uh, but, unfortunately, you can fall back down that second time, and that's where you'll end up game over and you'll have to redo the area. Once the creature has been destroyed, we're going to head over to the left, and we saw another little cave entrance peeking out from the uh, background. We're going to enter inside of that now. And once inside here, head all the way over to the right where there's an elevator. You can press the button for the elevator in order to call it. Now, this is pretty much the elevator that decides, like, what ending you've gotten. Like, whatever you've done, it will be determined by pretty much how the way the elevator acts in a lot of ways. Because if you didn't do a lot of things, you could end up game overing right here. But since we've done plenty, uh, we'll be able to enter inside the elevator. And once inside, you want to click on the third floor option, and you'll go all the way to the top here. Once we make it to the top here, the whole first part of this is automatic until we end up hitting the switches in the background and take care of uh, Scissor Man here. And then we have one last problem that we'll have to deal with.
after we think things are finally over there, Mary decides to attack us one last time trying to take us out, but we'll have to mash the buttons real quick and the crows end up coming to our rescue since we ended up saving them and now we get to enjoy the rest of the S ending. So there you have it guys, that is the S ending for Clock Tower on the Super Nintendo. I guess technically is the best overall ending since you have someone survive with you and there's a few variants as far as getting the S ranked ending is concerned and a lot of the stuff we do during this particular run is the same stuff that we're going to be doing for pretty much all of the other ending runs. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this a little bit interesting, instead of just going right for the A ranked ending, uh, we're going to mix it up and we're going to go ahead and do the D, E, and F ranked endings, and we can do one run in order to get all three of those endings. Once we're back at the title screen, we can check the ending list, and you can see we now have the S 
ending. Now we're going to go to the quick start option. And like I said, we're going to be going for the D, E, and F endings during this run. And thankfully, because of the way the game works with the continue system, uh, we'll be able to get all three of those endings in one go here. So that'll help us speed things along quite a bit. Now we're going to start off very similar to the way we did before, uh, entering inside of this room, checking the box overhead of the dresser. Uh, if it has the key, we're good for the West Wing. If not, we can grab it at the other location. Uh, either way, whatever ends up being the case with it, we're then going to head back to the door on the far right side, where we are once again going to grab the perfume item. After grabbing the perfume from the bedroom, we're going to head back out into the hallway. Now, when you pass this door each time, you'll end up having the dots appear. This is to kind of signify you can hear the sound effect and all of whether or not you want to go in there and end up running into Scissor Man for the first time inside there. There's a few ways to instigate your first time meeting him. Another way is to walk into this room before going into that bathroom, in which case he will bust through the ceiling here, the glass ceiling and just one of the coolest entrances but we can really easily get around them because all we need to do is run back into this next hallway back to the one we just were in and then run right back in to the big room where he just appeared and he ends up being gone from there we can now head to the left and we're going to climb up the stairs and then go back into that closet hallway we're going to be doing this pretty much every single run uh, which is annoying, but uh, it's the easiest way to kind of get away from him, or one of the easiest ways uh, to get around. Like I mentioned, uh, there are multiple ways to go about doing everything pretty much in the game. There's only a couple of spots where you're going to get kind of pigeonholed into doing a few of the same things each run in order to get certain endings, but a lot of the time it's up to you to kind of do which path you want to do. Another way that you can end up getting Scissor Man to appear for the first time is instead of going down to the first initial hallway where that bathroom is and where we get the perfume from the bedroom, uh, the first kind of doorway will take you to a hallway that's been collapsed and you can climb up there and grab a rock and then bust open the wall inside of that same room and it'll take you out to the courtyard where a pool is and uh, you can end up having uh, your friend or orphan Anne ends up being being stuck in the pool drowning uh, and that can be your first instance of him appearing that way so there's a couple of ways uh, in order to run into him for the first time just like we did before though we're gonna run into this room we had to mash the panic button in order to make it over here wait for him to eventually leave and just like we did before we're gonna have to do this whole kind of song and dance uh, in order to get back over the dresser grab the black robe and come back over grab the insecticide again, and then finally we can leave the room and head back into the previous hallway.
now once we're finally back in this hallway, we're heading back to the right and down the long trek back down the stairs. Once we're back on the bottom floor here, now head over to the far left side, back to where the kitchen is located. Now we're going to do exactly what we did before, where we're going to use the insecticide on the stove, but we're also going to make sure that we check the fridge in order to get the meat. Now, while we don't really, I think, necessarily need to do this aspect of it in order to get ending D, E, and F, uh, we're just going to go ahead and be part of what we're doing here for this run. Most importantly though, still is using the insecticide in order to get ourselves the golden key. Basically, once you have the gold key, you'll be able to go into the two rooms located to the right in this foyer that we haven't been able to enter. And there's a couple of different things that can happen here. One of which is a cutscene that will end up leaving you being locked up inside of a cage. Another is just an empty version of that room with the lights out. There's a suit of armor in the corner that, after looking at it, will affect the ending. You have to go into that room in order to eventually get the silver key, which is located on the table in the room. But if you get the cutscene and end up getting locked away instead, you won't be able to grab the key right away. You'll have to come back around and get the key the kind of second time you come back through this area. Now, in order for us to end up going after the D, E, and F endings, basically, I end up doing the run like I just did, but if the cutscene doesn't play here where I get captured instead, if I end up getting the empty room, which is what I get here, I'm now going to actually look at the suit of armor, which will reveal uh, another gruesome sight, but also put us towards the path of the endings we're going to be going for. A lot of what determines what endings and the way that things play out at the end is the amount of your friends you actually see die and which scenes end up playing. Uh, doing this, I know for sure, ends up leading us to that uh, D, E, and F path. We're going to check now the item here in the center of the room. This gets us the silver key, which allows us to enter the other door, in this case the one now located on the bottom floor. When it comes to this room that we're going to about to enter inside, this is another one that's affected by a bit of the random factor here. Inside of here, you'll have a few bookshelves, one of which may contain that passage that mentions the statue with the, the demon idol that you can end up using in order to go through the sacrificial room. It also may contain a mural that's being blocked, and you have the option in order to knock over a shelf in order to see all of the mural, which will allow you to know that you can find the staff item. So, for example here, when we come into the room this time around, when you look at the uh, painting in the background, it'll tell you that part of it is hidden uh, behind the shelf. If you're able to interact with the shelf that's just directly in front, the one on the left, more towards the center of the room, uh, you'll be able to interact with it and you can push it over, which will allow you to see what's going on in the background. If you don't 
have that option, which we do have it here. Uh, instead, there's a book on the bookshelf on the right side you can look at, which may contain the passage. Uh, and if none of that's working, you'll have to find the other library that has that uh, demon statue passage. Uh, you may be able to actually get multiple ways to get into the sacrifice room each time as well. Um, but these are just some of the ways that I can tell kind of like which path I'm going to decide to take. Since I'm able to see all of that mirror on the background now, I know I can go for the staff in order to get through the ceremony room. Now, in order to take a little bit of a shortcut, we're going to head on through into this door here. Uh, this is the Scream hallway, or one of the two Scream hallways, potentially. Uh, you can look at the windows and you'll hear a scream, which will lead to another one of your friend's deaths. Uh, which uh, wouldn't play out at this point. This happens very early in the game. Uh, and we actually will be using that particular death uh, in order to help us get an ending much, much farther on. Once we're on this side of the mansion, we're working now towards getting into that ceremony room. Uh, in order to do so, of course, we're going to need the uh, staff this time instead of the demon statue. Uh, unfortunately, this door is locked. This kind of basically tells us that's the ceremony room, so at least we know which one that one is. Checking inside this room, this is the piano room. Uh, behind this curtain to the left... If you're going for the staff, if that's what you're going to be needing, uh, then located here will be just that, the staff. Uh, or it can end up being Scissor Man if uh, things aren't playing out in that way. So you'll end up being Chase and have to worry about that. But this time we're able to get the staff pretty easily. Uh, and then once you have that, we're going to be able to exit out of the room. Now, we still need to be able to open up the ceremony room itself. Now, to do that, we're going to have to go back to the second floor. So, we're going to head to the right, uh, head back into here, and then head up the staircase up to the top floor and eventually lead us back to the kid room, or the children's room, where we'll have to battle that doll uh, in order to get the ceremony key. Because we already have the staff, as well as we're not going to be doing any more with the secret room, we don't have to worry about that plank of wood during this particular run. Heading over to the left, have to head through this hallway, uh, eventually getting here, and the second door is the location of the children's room. Grab the ceremony key, just like where it was the first time, uh, wait for the doll to finally end up appearing and stopping and then you can either stand still you can kind of run around uh, I found no key way to make sure that the doll attacks every time it's just kind of completely random when it finally decides to go ahead and attack and it can happen weird sometimes the doll will attack head on other times it'll run past you into the wall uh, it just it can be a little bit finicky that's for sure Once the doll is taken care of, though, we're heading back to the hall, heading back over to the right and back to the staircase where we'll be able to head down and go and unlock the ceremony room. Once you finally get into this room, 
Uh, once you enter, before, like you saw, we used the demon statue in order to put on that thing to the left. Uh, instead, we're going to go into the inventory since we have the staff, and you want to put it into the vase in the uh, upper right side here. And this will do the same thing that the demon statue did, basically just opens up the floor, allowing us to get to the ladder so we can head down into the cave. Now we have it set up that we can get three different endings right now. We're going to get the worst of the three endings first and just get that out of the way. Uh, and the reason why we're going to do it this way is because by doing this, when we continue at the uh, main menu, it'll put us at a great spot where we can easily access the other slightly better endings. Uh, so first up is the F ending. Do not run to the right here. Don't run to the right. Instead, immediately go inside of this opening. Now once here, we're going to run all the way to the right, we have to kind of climb up and back down, get to the monster, free it, and have to run away from it. Now because of the way we're setting this all up, we will only have to do this part once in order to get these three endings, uh, because we get that very lucky save. Uh, there may be other ways to manipulate the saves as well for a couple of the other endings, getting them closer uh, instead of having to do full, full runs for them. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the way things played out, I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to do that, but these were the ones where I was able to easily pull them off. So, we'll get over here to the red curtain, open it up for the monster to appear, and I'll get ready to start mashing those panic buttons, uh, in order to try to escape from the evil thing. You get very used to this, as well as very bored of this, if you're doing one continual run of the game, just trying to play it over and over again to get all the endings in one go. Once we've taken care of the monster and it's all blown up there and we can control Jennifer, head back to the left and go through the other opening uh, to where the elevator is and open up the elevator and head inside uh, for what ends up being the worst, I think honestly the worst ending that the game has. Arguably as far as what ends up transpiring, uh, you could argue that uh, ending H is the worst ending, but I think ending F is the least satisfying. So head over here to the right, hit uh, hit the button for the elevator, and enjoy ending F. So there you have it, there was ending F. Basically you can get ending F in a, a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to end up getting ending F and it mostly I think has to do with not having any information or enough information about what's going on at the house. You haven't exposed anything, you didn't check out the relic room and look through a lot of the other notes or any of the other events transpiring to really kind of give you more information on what's uh, kind of happening or whatever. Uh, what we do in order to negate getting ending F here when we end up continuing in just a second 
is when we first got down here, uh, just like we did in the S rank run where we ended up running into Lottie, um, we can end up running into her again and doing the same situation. And that will give us what we need in order to actually use the elevator here at the end. So uh, that helps us as far as getting, like I said, there's multiple endings uh, pretty quickly. Once the credits finish up and we get back to the main menu, make sure that you go to continue. Do not hit quick start or new game start. Uh, and then immediately go back out and head to the left. And this will take you back out to the main room of the cave, just to the right of where the dog is. We're going to head to the right and we end up uh, running into our friend. Once that cutscene has played out, now head back over to the left and enter inside of here. Head back now to the elevator. Now, because of doing this extra cutscene and seeing all of that, we now have the ability to actually access the elevator. It doesn't give us too much more um, of a better ending, but it does count uh, nonetheless. Once you get to the end of the hallway, hit the button in order to access the elevator. Once you're inside, uh, this will give you your option. You can get either ending D or ending E, uh, either by selecting floor 2 or by selecting floor 3. We're going to start off by selecting floor 3 to get the first of the two endings here. So there you have it, not really much better of an ending, it's almost identical I guess when you really think about it with ending F because that's 
probably similar to what happened in the ending effort we just don't see uh, why the blood's coming out of the elevator but still uh, we end up getting that now once the uh, credits end up rolling all the way through for this we'll go back to the main menu and this time we'll go back to the elevator but this time go to floor two Now if you did everything in the order that I did, this will allow you when you hit the continue now at the main menu, you'll automatically be in the elevator and be able to go right to floor two. So that's the reason why this ends up working well as far as getting uh, all those endings in uh, sequential order without having to do all those different playthroughs. So if you did everything right, when you hit continue here, you'll automatically be inside of the elevator, select floor two. Once you're on the second floor, run over to the right and go through into the next room. Uh, I don't know if you have to really run to the left or whatever, or it'll play out, but that'll be the ending. Uh, and then we'll be able to move on to a slightly better ending uh, after this. Now, another ending we'll be getting in just a little bit is very similar to the one we just played, uh, but we get the option to kind of do more at it. If you are uh, at the rank that we got there as far as the DE uh, ranked run, uh, that's why you don't have like any chance to fight back against her at the end there. But if you do other things, you'll have a chance to fight against her uh, in order to go for a different ending. So, once again, we have credits, but then we will finally get back to... Uh, the game and now we have uh, a few more endings left we have a B and C still to get as well as the uh, kind of uh, very short runs that will be endings G and H
as we begin our next run, it's pretty much going to be the same kind of thing we've been doing. We're going to start off by heading through into the first hallway, head over to the left here and enter inside in order to check for the West Wing key, as well as then going through and grabbing the perfume. As you saw, it was unfortunately empty in the previous room for the West Wing Key, but we'll have to get it from the other way. Though there are, like I said, there's ways to kind of get through, you don't need to get that key necessarily. When we head to the left, we're going to ignore the room, just go keep going, uh, where we run into Scissor Man busting through once again the stained glass ceiling above us. Just like we've been doing, we're going to do our best to dodge him by heading to the right, entering the previous hallway, and then back to the left, and heading up the staircase, going into that closet and doing the whole thing, the whole song and dance, once again, getting the black robe while we do so. While we, unfortunately we never got any of the versions of Clock Tower here in North America, the game was re-released on a few different platforms including computer systems as well as the port to the PlayStation 1 which actually added a few different things to the game uh, including that extra room so that the uh, one set of rooms on the West Wing uh, doesn't have that just one room where you can't access it. You have a, basically just an empty useless room but at least there was an added room as well as a few other touch-ups here and there and the game was even ported over over to the Wonder Swan of all systems, uh, though of course there had to be some concessions to the game to make it be able to fit. Now, after grabbing the black robe and the insecticide, since we didn't get the West Wing key during the other room, uh, I'm going to show you guys where it is here uh, in the alternate place it can be. Over to the left here, you will find a crate. You'll automatically kind of climb over the crate and run to the other, other side of it, uh, but you can go over here and click on the bird's nest in the upper left here, uh, then click back on the crate, and now she will push it uh, towards the wall. You'll then be able to climb up and interact with the bird's nest again, uh, this time getting the west wing key. So this is the other location uh, that it could potentially be in your run.
Once we now have that, though, we're still heading back over to the right side, heading back down the staircase and heading to the kitchen. Once back in the kitchen, you're going to want to use the insecticide on the oven, grab the meat from the fridge, whichever order you want to end up doing that. Just make sure that you do use the insecticide before clicking on it or else you'll have to leave the room uh, and come back in and reset everything. Now that we got the gold key, we're going to check the first door located here. This ends up being the one that is unlockable by the gold key, and we get the cutscene that we're looking for. After this plays out, we're going to end up finding ourselves locked up inside of a cage. Once we find ourselves in the cage, waking up, we're going to use the meat that we grabbed from the kitchen uh, in order to feed to the other person located here where we find out who he is. Uh, and then after uh, talking to him, after giving the meat, having the discussion, and then talking to him again, a few moments later we will end up getting saved and rescued from the cage. Now when you get to the end here, you will end up having Mary talk to you. Don't go towards the right. Don't move anymore. Click instead on the plank of wood that is located in the background.
now you're able to exit outside and you'll be in the courtyard. To the right is where the pool is located, which I mentioned about potentially where you can end up having one of the orphans get drowned there. Uh, but to the left, we can push this crate out of the way and get inside of this room. This takes us to the one of the scream hallways, the one on the lower left side of the mansion. Now, from here on out, we're going to be working our way towards the end of the game. Uh, we're going to head back to the room that we unlocked using the gold key. Uh, we're not going to look at the suit of armor in the background. You want to make sure that you don't look at the suit of armor uh, this time around. Uh, but instead, you still want to make sure that you inspect the item in the center here. Uh, this will give us the silver key. Once you have the silver key, head back outside of the room and head up the staircase and enter into that locked door, the door that's locked by the silver key. Uh, basically the same location as the one we just entered here with the gold key. Uh, those are the two rooms that can switch up though, depending upon which playthrough you're doing. Now, once inside of this room, uh, just like before, uh, if you're able to check the mural and then push over the bookcase, you can do that in order to get the staff. Uh, or there's the book on the shelf, which could potentially lead you to the demon statue. Uh, though you want to make sure you look at everything in this room. Uh, this will actually allow us enough information if, we're, if we look at everything uh, in order to help us lead towards the uh, potential good endings here, the better endings. Uh, in this case, we're going to end up going for ending B uh, during this run. Now, since we have the West Wing key, we can go either way. We can go either through the top floor here, or we can go back to the bottom uh, floor. And either way, we're going to be heading to the other side of the mansion. Now, once we are over here, we already know that we need the demon statue. So, all that we really need to focus on is making sure that we're able to get a hold of that statue by, of course, going all the way to the far right side uh, in order to go across the plank of wood and grab it from the statue. But, we still also need that ceremony key. So, before we go there, we're going to stop by the kids' room and do this whole song and dance against the evil crazy doll after grabbing the ceremony key. After dealing with the doll once again, head back to the hallway and head it over to the right. We're going to expect the floor hole and then go over to the plank of wood and drop that down so that we're able to get across uh, and then go to that second statue where we'll be able to grab the demon uh, idol or whatever it is.
Now, once we have that, we can head down to the bottom floor here. We just have to find where the ceremony room is. Now, if you go ahead and get the crow freed, uh, basically that will lead you to what could potentially be endings A and C. Uh, but because we're not going to go and free the crow, uh, this will help us get to ending B, which is affected by not only seeing how many friends of yours have died or the other orphans have died, but also uh, saving or not saving the crow. Uh, by not saving them all together, it works the same basically, I think, as seeing all three of your friends dead, or at least two of your friends dead, something like that. Uh, but basically by doing it the way that I'm doing it here, uh, this guarantees that I will get ending B, uh, and then we can focus on the last two uh, A and C uh, before the very easy endings at the end. Just like we've done with all the other runs that made it down to the cave, get right in front of the dog, be sure to equip the black robe and the perfume before getting too, too close, uh, and you'll be able to pass by and then uh, go towards where the giant monstrosity is and we'll have to escape from him. Now, because we didn't do other things, we're not saving the uh, crow or anything, uh, we don't have to worry about seeing Lottie being sacrificed or anything like that. We have enough information uh, from the ceremony room, the relic uh, research room, uh, where the mural is in the background. Uh, we, we got enough information, I think, from that, uh, which is what allows us kind of to go right to this. We have enough where we can still access the elevator, without getting the dreaded ending F. Uh, I wish the ending, though, here was a little bit more varied as far as what we're going to be doing here, but still, free the monster from the curtain and then uh, mash those panic buttons until we're finally safe. Thankfully, if you do die, you just have to kind of redo the section here and redo the running away, so it's not too, too bad, uh, but still an annoyance. And if you're doing a lot of runs in succession, uh, this part will probably be where you mess up because it just becomes very boring uh, doing it multiple times. Once the monster is taken care of, head over to the left side and enter inside of the opening. We're then going to head to the right where the elevator is located, hitting the button and entering inside of it. And then you want to go all the way up to the third floor.
just like it happened before, the whole kind of first part there will happen. Uh, and then for the final last part, you're going to try to get attacked by Mary. Uh, you're going to mash the buttons, and this time around, she gets shocked by the panels in the background, and this leads us to ending B. Now, for endings A and C, they are once again going to be pretty much the same path we just took. The only difference, really, the only real difference at all, uh, is going to be freeing the bird as well as the other stuff that we did. Uh, we got to make sure that we get the cutscene, we get locked away, uh, we can show the, you know, the meat to, uh, to Simon being captured inside the cage and being that whole kind of sequence. Uh, that will need to happen. Uh, but other than that, like, it's pretty much what you just saw with ending B here, uh, just freeing the bird. And basically what we'll do is, instead of, uh, going to floor 3 for ending A, we'll go to floor 2, uh, for ending C. And that's really the only difference between them as far as the, uh, runs. But, um, because of the way things get set up and the way the autosave works, unfortunately we can't get both runs in one go. So we have to do uh, full runs uh, in order to kind of get to both of those endings. After dropping back into another quick start game and getting control of Jennifer, head back through the first couple of rooms, go through the uh, the bedroom, check the box, of course, for the West Wing key, uh, and then head through and grab that perfume just like we have been doing before. Uh, thankfully, only one more time after this, only one more time after this will we have to deal with uh, the perfume and all that.
We're going to ignore the bathroom again and head back to the left. Uh, this will, of course, lead us to having Scissor Man bust through the ceiling once again. Like we've been doing in all the other runs, as he chases us, we're going to head back into this hallway, head all the way up the stairs, and then back through in order to go get that black robe once again. I remember years ago during the early days of emulation uh, with the Super Nintendo is when I kind of first discovered games like Clock Tower. Uh, and at that time there wasn't a you know translated ROM. It was not until like the early 2000s that a translated ROM came out of it. But since I loved Clock Tower on the PS1, I had rented it. Uh, I didn't own a copy for many years later, but I had rented it and really liked it. It was cool to kind of see something like this uh, on the Super Nintendo. And it plays actually really well once you kind of get the, the hang of the controls. It's still a bit slippery at times as far as getting her to do exactly what you want, uh, especially in the heat of the moment when there's the more intense moments going on in the game. Uh, but still, just overall the fluid animation and everything they put into detail-wise uh, in this game was just fantastic for its time. After doing another rendition of the Black Robe Shuffle, uh, we grab, of course, the insecticide as well before heading back on through and heading down the staircase to the kitchen area. Nothing new or exciting here at this point. We're still grabbing the meat from the fridge uh, and using the insecticide, making sure that we get the gold key. Now once we're back out in the main hall, we're going to check this door up here. 
This time around, though, we're not lucky. This ends up being locked, so that means that the gold uh, key locked room is above us. So we're going to head over to the right and head up this staircase and check the door right above this one. Heading inside here, thankfully, we do end up getting the cutscene that we want, so we end up being thrown once again inside of the locked up cage. After doing the same thing we did before, making sure that we use the meat, have the multiple discussions uh, with him, uh, we end up being freed. Just like also before, when we get to the door on the far right, make sure you don't go out the door. Make sure that you grab the plank of wood in the background in order to make sure that you stay safe and get back into the courtyard. After getting back out into the courtyard, head to the left, move the box, and head through the door into the one of the stream hallways. Now we need to get back to the room where the silver key is located, aka where that cutscene played out before we got poisoned and locked away. So we're going to head back up the staircase and head back inside that room and grab the key. Make sure that we don't look at the suit of armor in the background.
unfortunately though, it's a bit annoying that we have to go all the way back up there, grab the silver key, and then go right back down the staircase because of the long animation, uh, because we need to go now in the locked room that's down here. This is the whole relic study room that we've been in multiple times now. Uh, just like we've done before, we need to check to make sure that we can see either the mural in the background, know if we're going for the staff, uh, or whether or not we're going to check the books in order to get the uh, information about the demon statue. Checking that, you can see if it's just the dot dot dots, that means that uh, the book is not located here. Uh, the mural, we can then check kind of in the background. And then if it gives us the option, we can also then push the shelf. Make sure, though, that once you push the shelf, that you look at the mural one more time uh, as well. That way that you uh, make sure that you uh, know about the staff and everything. With the information that we need from that room, we're now going to head back through the Scream Hallway over to the other side of the mansion. Now before we can finish up the game, we're going to have to find ourselves the staff, aka the piano room. Uh, we're also going to make sure that we find the crow room, which we're able to here. Uh, free the crow using the key before exiting out back to the hall. We're going to bypass this opening here back to where the staircase is located. We can head over to the right on the bottom floor for the location potentially of the other room that we need, the piano room, as well as we also still need the, the ceremony room itself. Inside here, this is the piano room, so we're able to run to the left and go through the curtain and uh, find ourselves the staff that we'll be using in order to go through into the cave. Now we're going to head back over to the uh, left side here. Inside here is the other bathroom. We didn't really need to come in here. We know kind of now where everything is located. We just got to get that last key uh, so that we can get into the ceremony room. So we're going to head to the left uh, and then climb up the staircase to the top floor and then head to the good old children's room.
After grabbing the ceremony key, we're going to fight the doll once again. Try to get it to attack us as quick as we can, but sometimes it's not as easy. But once it's done, we can move back, and now we just got to go back to the bottom floor uh, where we can find the ceremony room. Once we're inside here, since we have the staff, we're going to go ahead and put it in the vase, opening it up, and then heading down the large ladder back to the basement area in the cave. Just like we've done on all the runs, just get close to the dog, make sure that we equip both the perfume and the robe. You can actually do it in either order, you don't have to put the robe on then the perfume. You can do perfume first and then the robe, but it really doesn't make any difference. Now we're not going to look for any kind of sacrifice or anything like that. We're going to instead immediately go into here and run all the way over to the right. Uh, with everything that we've done, if we've done it all correctly, we'll be going after the A ending, uh, which will leave us only the C ending left, which is pretty much the same except at the end here where we're going to be going to the elevator and going to the third floor for the A ending. We're going to be doing the same exact run, just going to the second floor uh, in order to get that C ending.
After another very exciting chase scene, we can control Jennifer, run to the left and head through the opening, then over to the right and into the elevator. When you do make it to the elevator, uh, go ahead and select floor number three. If you select two, you'll go for the C ending. Uh, once you get to the third floor, though, this is pretty much automatic, unlike the other ones where we had to still do one last little sequence. Uh, this one, you can just kind of sit back. You just have kind of still a struggle, but you don't have to, like, panic or press any of the buttons or anything. So there you have ending A, we now have only ending C, as well as ending G and H, which are very similar also to each other, and thankfully aren't complete runs, barely even half a run that we'll have to do for uh, both of those runs.
now that we're going for ending C, uh, unfortunately, not very exciting compared to some of the other runs, because we've already done pretty much everything. It's going to be the exact same thing we just did uh, for ending A. In fact, there's really no difference at all, except for the very end of it, uh, where we will be selecting uh, floor 2 instead of 3. Uh, we're starting off, of course, heading into this room, checking the box to see if we end up getting the key. Uh, if we are lucky enough to, we don't have to worry about that. We can head through the other room uh, and make sure that we grab the uh, perfume. After getting all that stuff, heading back into the hallway, heading to the left, ignoring the bathroom, and going once again to see him crash on through the ceiling. Thankfully, we are slowly nearing the end of the amount of times we're going to have to uh, run away and do this whole sequence. Uh, we do have to do it in the final runs as well, but that means we only have two more after this time. Uh, that we have to kind of go up through the long uh, staircase sequence uh, and then uh, making sure that we're able to kind of get over the dresser finding the black robe. Even though we've done it so many times already, make sure that you mash the button, of course, when running over here. You don't want to accidentally mess up the jump and end up dying because of uh, boredom of doing this segment again. Once we have grabbed the robe, we'll grab the insecticide. Uh, thankfully, this is the last time we'll have to grab the insecticide and even get the black robe. We'll have to come back to this room, but we don't have to worry about uh, any of the items for the last two endings now uh, after this one. Just like we've always done, head back down to the bottom floor, head to the kitchen, use the insecticide and get the meat, uh, and then we're going to seek out, of course, the cutscene so that we end up getting thrown into the cell uh, where we will uh, end up escaping back into the courtyard.
Thankfully, this is also the last time that we will have to go into the kitchen and use the insecticide, uh, as well as grabbing the meat, as we won't do that for the last two runs. After getting back into this hallway, unfortunately this door ends up being locked, so we have to head up top to the second floor in order to unlock the gold room door there. Thankfully though, this does lead us to the cutscene so that we end up getting poisoned and end up locked away in the cell. After being freed from the cell using the meat on him and all that stuff, Lottie freeing us, uh, make sure that you grab the plank of wood in the background in order to smack Mary uh, before getting back into the courtyard or else you'll end up dying if you try to attempt to go through the door.
Once we're back in the courtyard, though, we're going to head over to the left, move the crate that's located here in order to get access to this door. We're now going to head back inside. We're going to go to the door where we had the cutscene play out, where we need the gold key, uh, in order to grab that silver key. Once again, make sure that we don't look at the suit of armor in there. We just grab the silver key and then end up leaving. Once you do have that silver key, head back through the hallways, head back down to the bottom floor here where we have the locked room. Uh, and just like we did before, we're going to search uh, all of the possible searchable areas, including the note on the far desk. Uh, we're also keeping an eye out for the uh, demon statue lore paper thing so that we know whether or not we're going to go after that staff or after uh, the demon idol. So now we've done all that, we have all the information we need, we just have to go get the demon idol, uh, as well as we have to get the ceremony uh, key, of course, as well. Once we're back into this hallway, we can take the uh, shortcut uh, through this door here and head all the way over to the opposite side, and uh, we're going to start searching uh, for the ceremony room. The other room that we need to find is the cage room so that we can free the bird. Uh, make sure that you free the uh, crow uh, before heading down into the cave. This is uh, important so that we uh, end up on that right track. You may not need the free them in order uh, to 100% go for uh, ending C since we're going to floor 2. Uh, but I do it just to be uh, safe.
We have a good idea where the ceremony room is now. We still need to get the uh, ceremony key, though, uh, as well as the demon uh, idol statue. We can take care of either one uh, first. Uh, when we make it to the top of the stairs here, we're going to start off by heading over to the far left side, going through, uh, going back to the children's room where we're going to have to do battle with the doll. Interestingly enough, though, in the uh, PlayStation 1 re-release of the game, they did make the room with the doll a bit more challenging uh, because also that clown that's hanging out in the room, he will also potentially come to life and fight you uh, as well in that version. So this room is a little bit more challenging uh, in the PlayStation re-release. Once we have the ceremony key, we're going to head back over to the right where that hole is located and place that plank of wood. Uh, that way we'll be able to get across and we can grab the demon idol uh, from that statue. Once you have that in your hand, head back to the left and down the staircase and head to the ceremony room. Once inside, of course, place the demon statue opening up the floor and we can head down to the cave. Thankfully, the last time we're going to have to do that during this playthrough. Just like always, equip the robe as well as the perfume so we can easily sneak on past the dog. Head all the way over to the right, we don't have to worry about looking for Lottie with the sacrifice thing because we of course got locked up, so 
her fate was sealed with that whole thing. Uh, and once we end up freeing the monster here, we just have to make sure we're able to safely run away for the thankfully last time. Once he's taken care of, we'll head back to the left, head through the opening to the elevator, and head inside of the elevator. Now once you're inside, make sure that you select Floor 2. Do not select Floor 3 at this point. Now once you arrive, head to the right and you'll go to the next room. Now this is similar to what we saw earlier on in the game, but we ended up being killed no matter what. This time though, you'll have the ability to mash the button, uh, the panic button, in order to uh, save yourself uh, during this conflict. Now once she is knocked out, head to the left, go through the opening, you'll have two openings here. Either one's going to take you to where you need to go, uh, obviously it's easier and quicker just to select the first one. Now when you make it to the next screen, you're going to immediately run over to the left, move the cursor high up, because in order to select the ladder in the background, which you need to do, the cursor has to be pretty high up in order to hit it, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but just get it up there in order to get this. Uh, this will lead to the ladder climbing seam where once again uh, you'll have to mash the panic button in order uh, to stop her from grabbing you here uh, in order to finish up this playthrough.
So there you have it. That is ending C for Clock Tower. We now have only two endings left, which are endings G and H, and they're very, very similar to one another uh, as far as the way that you end up getting them, just one uh, major difference between them. Uh, and then we will have gotten every single ending in Clock Tower. As we get back to the title screen, I'll show you guys the ending list. As you can see, the only two we're missing is G and H. And now we're going to head into another quick start. Now, thankfully, this is a lot quicker of a run. Now, as soon as we begin, uh, we're going to head to the left. We're going to ignore the whole bedroom. We don't have to worry about the perfume, getting the West Wing key. We don't need any of that. The key, though, is as you're running to the left, when you get the notification outside of the bathroom in order to go in, uh, which we did very early on in the game, but uh, we haven't done since, we now want to do this. Once inside, open up the curtain. Make sure that the door is open before opening up the shower curtain. That way you can escape a little easier. Uh, and then uh, head back out there. We're still going to run away from Bobby here uh, and do the same kind of thing we've been doing. Um, as far as being able to escape from him. Uh, but this puts us on the fast track as far as trying to uh, get to the end of this particular ending. Of course, it's still very annoying to have to climb all the way up these stairs and then run to the left. 
Uh, thankfully, though, we just have to wait it out. We can then immediately uh, leave the room once he leaves. We don't have to worry about climbing back over uh, and grabbing the black robe this time around. We can just immediately leave the room uh, once he does so. Once you have control of Jennifer, once again, head out of the room back to this hallway uh, and then head back down the staircase. Now, now from here, we're going to head back down to the first floor and we're going to go into the first of the two scream hallways. Uh, we've talked about them as the scream hallways throughout the course of the uh, runs here, but this is the first time we're actually going to use that. Once you're back on the bottom floor, head over to the left and enter inside of this doorway. This leads us to that, like, in-between uh, hallway as well as where we would enter from the courtyard uh, after escaping the cage. Uh, but because we initiate that first Bobby encounter in the bathroom, uh, we can initiate another encounter here uh, looking at the windows in the background. Now, when you start looking at them, you'll have the whole thing of it'll be like there's a courtyard outside. Uh, what you're going to be looking for is in one of them... Hopefully, if you if you're as long as you're lucky enough, uh, and you got that first initial uh, cutscene we already did with the Scissor Man, uh, one of them you should have uh, a scream. And once you get the scream and you get the cutscene, uh, we can now head towards the end. Once you see Anne through through the window, you have control of Jennifer again. Head over to the left and back into the main area here with the staircase. And once again, head to the left and go through the door. Now, this is the hallway that normally has the kitchen. We're going to not have to worry about the kitchen. In fact, we're going to go past the kitchen uh, and into what is the garage area. Now, once you're in the garage, there is a crate in the garage where we'll be able to locate a key in order to use the car located here. The big difference between the endings is just whether or not we saw that second death or not. That's really the only difference in the ending. So, uh, grab the key located here in this box and then go over to the front of the car and you'll be able to interact with it. Now, the first time you interact with it at the right spot, uh, she won't leave. She'll question whether or not she should leave. Uh, you just want to keep pestering her to go in. You'll take three uh, times for her to finally take off in the car. Now, if you've seen the two deaths of your friends, if you've seen two of your friends die, you'll get uh, ending G. If you've only seen one of your friends die, you'll end up getting ending H. So we end up getting ending G uh, for this run.
not a whole lot goes on in the ending itself other than we get to see the car and the credits. There is one final thing that's thrown on to the end of the ending to make it uh, more interesting and, and why it's considered the, the worst or one of the worst endings along with ending H uh, just because of the end result. So yep, either way, Jennifer ends up dying a few days later, even if she ends up escaping with the car for ending G. Uh, but now we have one ending left, ending H. Uh, we're just going to jump right back into the game using a quick start. Uh, you just need to get one encounter uh, with Bobby. You can decide which way you want to do this, whether you want to use the pool, whether or not you want to use the stained glass, uh, whether or not you want to use the bathroom, uh, whichever one you decide. Pick which one you want, uh, get him to appear, in which case we're going to use the stained glass uh, just because it's very easy for us to get back out in this spot. Uh, get him to chase us, and we're going to take him all the way back upstairs and get him uh, to go away. And then we can head right to the garage uh, where we'll be able to get right into the car and get the last ending. Thankfully, even though we do have to go all the way up the stairs and all to kind of get through all this, uh, we don't have to grab any of the items. Uh, if you want to go right to the garage, you can just run straight there, but you won't be able to interact with the items there because of the enhanced uh, panic level that's kind of going on since uh, Scissor Man ended up showing up here. So that's the reason why we kind of have to go through all this. I think there are some glitches and stuff I know that make the runs a bit faster than necessarily maybe I've been able to complete them here. Uh, they get all the endings, but this is the way I found to be pretty efficient uh, as far as getting uh, all the endings in a relatively uh, quick manner.
After Bobby ends up leaving, we're going to head back into the hallway, and we're just going to head down the long, 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 slow staircase. Thankfully, it's the last last time we have to do this, uh, and then we'll finally be able to head to the garage to finish up. Once you've made it back into the garage, all you need to do is check the crate just like before, in which case you will find the car key. Uh, then interact with the car multiple times. Uh, she'll question whether or not she should or not. Uh, but after pestering her three times, just like before, she'll finally get in the car. Uh, and the ending is slightly different. A slightly different outcome this time around, uh, going after uh, ending H compared to G.
So there you have it, guys. That's all the endings to the original Clock Tower on the Super Famicom. Uh, not every single thing that the game has to offer. There are some things I didn't show, so I still very uh, highly encourage you to check out the game for yourself. Uh, explore the rooms I didn't explore during the run and stuff. Uh, but this way, I, I figured I'd show all the endings uh, in a pretty efficient manner. Uh, but with that, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.